Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review, and today I will be reviewing Inertia Pro by Mark Kirsten. Before we do this review, I'd very much like you to go and have a look at, do it afterwards actually if you want, actually do it before, don't mind, just come back here if you do do it now. Uh, have a look at onlinemagic.co, that's my online magic course. I've just, uh, well, just going to add a rope magic course, an introduction to rope magic. I put a coin magic course on there a couple of weeks ago and we've just had David Williamson on the live sessions. More special guests coming up, live sessions every week. It's ridiculous what you get for 9 99 and you get to hang out with me as well because I'm the one that teaches you. Yeah, imagine that, more of this. So if you, if you like this, you'll love that and uh, learn from a pro, go to onlinemagic.co. Boom, got myself a little rhyming thing there. Um, uh, and like and subscribe if you like this and share it if you like it. And, and you know, um, the, like today, I haven't got uh, much performance footage because this is, um, we're gonna be reviewing an app and it's quite hard to get performance footage of that. Um, but do know that I really, really spend a lot of time. I've spent a good week playing with this app a lot. I've had chats with Mark. Um, I've really sort of gone to town on finding out as much as I can about it. So a lot of work goes into these. So if you do share them, it'd be great. And if you're thinking, oh, I haven't seen him perform it that much, do know that I have, you know, spent time with it. So I'm, I'm kind of speaking from experience, not just going to tell you what the app is and what I think about it. Um, so just thought I'd let you know that. Um, this is an iPhone app. Now, if you haven't got an iPhone, don't turn off. Because I always forget to say it's an iPhone app and people get really excited and then got an iPhone. Don't turn off because the point of these uh, reviews is so we can have a chat about magic and about different concepts. So it does inform your magic, I think. That's kind of why I do this. Uh, and also, I would say with app reviews like this, I find them quite difficult because a lot of apps are, they're kind of like you the, con the, the device is to, like, this is the forcing device, all right? So you can do so many different things with it. So there are always going to be things I miss out. So if you come to the live sessions on Thursday or watch them afterwards, but it's great if you can come along five o'clock UK time every Thursday, bar the odd one. Uh, that's the kind of like second part of the review sometimes because I'll be forgetting to mention things and I can, I can answer your questions about the, the stuff there as well. So, uh, right, that's all the housekeeping. Let's get on with it. This is a, this was born out of, in Mark's own words, well, not exactly, I'm paraphrasing, the issue with a lot of ways you force things on phones. So, uh, and you do this kind of face down force thing. So there's been a lot of things where um, you may force a contact on a contacts list or something on a website where you turn the phone face down, they do a scroll, then you turn it up uh, and whatever it lands on is the force. Now, that's great, it's fine, um, and there's a lot of different ways of doing this. There are actually ways of doing this without apps as well. There's some really clever stuff out there, uh, the ways people have utilized this idea, but the problem with it is the phone is always face down, and as Mark said, people aren't stupid. They know that it's a phone screen, and know phones do amazing things, and when that phone is out of the way, they can't see what's on the screen. Now, it doesn't mean those ideas don't work at all. They they do, and I do things like a face down uh, number with, with Toxic Plus, um, but that's a little bit more justified. It's kind of like, let's put in a number, I don't even want to know what the number is, so it, it gives it a sense of chaos. With this, a lot of the time I don't feel like it's justified. It doesn't quite sit right, and, and that is how Mark felt, and that's how I felt about those sort of things, is why I didn't do them. Now, he did release Inertia, before I tell you what it all is, um, as part of his Amalgam project, season two, I believe. And this is that, but with a lot more bells and whistles and a lot more things you can do with it, including a remote feature uh, and a link to his other app, Zeno, which I'll talk briefly about uh, later on in, in this review. But it's just, it's absolutely brilliant. So what does it do? The process is this. That's the, the, the main process is you get your phone out, you open up, I don't know, Instagram, or they can, you say, open my Instagram, they can have a scroll around, and then you say, right, and the next thing you're going to do is just one big scroll up and see where it lands. So it's like a kind of roulette wheel. It's like a kind of, you, it, it, it's, it's a nice little process. It's going to land in a random place, and that place where it lands is a force. Have a look at it, and is it, a, is it an image? No, don't answer that in your head. Is it, 
I'm thinking by the way you're looking, it's not an image. It's, it's an, obviously everything on Instagram is an image, but there's something more on there that isn't an image. Is it something to do with if you think you're the centre of the universe and you're not? Is that what it is? Something like that. Can you read it out? And by the way, I will say this is real Instagram, real Twitter, real Facebook, a real website. You can choose whatever website so you can put your own websites in there and set that as the thing that opens up when you start. So open up Safari, it's going to land on this website and and then you can force anything on that and you can force anything in real time. So you don't have to know what you're going to force beforehand. I'm going to be careful because there's a lot I can talk about here, but I don't want to expose too much. But all I'll say is that is what it does. Some websites don't work if they're kind of really spammy websites that have constant pop-ups and things like that. But but most main websites, Netflix, anything like that, um, you can f force and you can do predictions. So you can have something ready um, and they, you know, you can decide way beforehand what you're going to force. Uh, and again, using Zeno, which we'll talk about in a minute. So it's it's great. And importantly, again, it's face up. Now you're dealing here with a device that people spend every day with. So the first thing I'll say, there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. The work that's gone into this to make this feel really, really real and that they are actually doing what they're doing is an awful lot. If you think about it, we spend our lives scrolling on our phones. So if you say to someone, right, scroll up once and they're looking at that screen, it has to really, really look like that's what they're doing. And that's kind of what they are doing. You can even open their Twitter feed or or go onto their Instagram and go go down and force something on, on their own site, which is, again, gives it that extra layer of convincingness. Is that right? I don't know if that's right. So that's what it does. Now, the remote feature, which is what you get with uh, this, is, well, there's two parts of it. There's one part where you can link it to Zeno. So Zeno, briefly, I will do another video on Zeno, is kind of the opposite of this. What Zeno is, instead of a force, you get them to send them a link or get them to, to uh, open a site on their phone. And it's one of these listing sites. So it could be horoscopes, uh, playing cards. Amazingly, you can make your own Zeno sites. So to link in with maybe a specific corporate gig you're doing, it could even be people from your company, all those kind of things. And you get them on their phone to look through, let's say it's horoscopes, they look through, they look at cancer and they, they read the little bit about it, and this is a peak thing. So you, without looking at their phone, will know what they're looking at, and then you can do a thing. So it's the opposite. It's not like a prediction. This is a peak. They go wherever they want on that site, and you know where they're going. So it feels a little bit like Wikitest in that way. With Inertia Pro, what you can do is you can link the two, and this is for no extra cost, but you would have to have Zeno as well. So if you've got Zeno, you can send them a link, and it walks you through this in a really intuitive way, a really clear way. They open the link. It opens the site. You go through the same process, you say, go to the top, you scroll, they scroll, and you force whatever it is on that site. And if you want to pay the extra, which I think is about 30 something pound, you can send them a link and it can open any Twitter feed that you want of any person. So if, they, if it could be yours, it could be theirs, it could be um, a celebrity, if they like a certain celebrity, you open their Twitter page, Twitter feed, you send a link to there, they go and you force um, a tweet on there. So there is a lot to be done with this. The initial use of it, I find brilliant. But the temptation is with all this stuff to go, right, you've landed on that. This is what it is. And what I've now played with, again, inspired by what Mark's told me, is, is doing it a little bit more subtly. So if they do this swipe and it lands between two posts, you can actually fish and you, you, you can make it a little bit more convincing so it isn't quite as clean. But what I did last night is I um, forced a word on a tweet. So there's a certain word and I just said, right, do the thing. They look at it and I said, what's the most interesting word uh, on the top tweet? Just the most, not the tweet, but the most interesting word. And I got the word and that was really fried someone. So it, you, we can kind of, we can look at the objections of, of apps, which are common and we talk about quite a lot and then get rid of those objections by make by creating more stages of of deception if you see what i mean and let's look at the common arguments about these sort of things so this is done if you don't do the remote version on your phone so straight away people are going to be like alarm bells it's your phone people are going to think it's an app so mark's thought of that of course and and the thing about mark's apps is that it's all about detail he has done so many things and spent a lot of time making sure 
those tiny little details remove all those questions. So it's on your phone. So it has to be really realistic. They, have, they could have a certain amount of choice. Whose Twitter feed do you want to look at? You know, even if you don't do the remote one. Whose Instagram? Okay, what's your Instagram? We'll do it on your Instagram page. And I will say that I really thought the remote version of this was going to be way more stronger than the version on my phone. But when I've actually performed this for lay people, I haven't noticed that they're responding in similar ways on their phone and on my phone. So they're not, it's almost like they're not as worried as we are about those things. And you can justify the way you do this. You can start giving reasons for it. You can start you know, talking about social media and the things we always do. Let's create some magic out of something that we do every day that's habitual. And, and then you can force certain things that may have certain messages in them. It, it's, it's just endless. And as he said, it's a bit like something like Digital Force Bag, where yes, that's the effect, but we, we, ha we can move away from the phone and make the effect into something else. Sometimes you may want to force something specific, and yes, you can go on uh, something like Google Images, which you can force off of, find the image and then do it that way, but it takes quite a long time. And if you want to do it in real time or force something specific for a certain gig, again, you can bring Zeno into the mix and, um, and you don't have to pay extra for that little bit and enforce this specific thing on that person. I hope this makes sense. It is quite hard to describe, uh, or maybe it's just that I'm not very good at it. I think that's probably it. But what do I think of this? Well, the first thing for me is that it's for an app, it's easy to use in real time. I don't have to do loads of prep. Now, there is a way you can, within like 30 seconds, you can get the force ready so your phone is closed. So you could open your phone in front of the person, unlock it, they open your Instagram and you're away. So you don't have to do any setup. Or you can very stealthily set it up right in front of them and decide in real time, like I said, what to force. But the important thing is it's not a complex process. Once I've learned it, I don't have to think too much about it. And very quickly, it becomes very habitual. You open up, bang, 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 and you're done. Um, the other thing I like is the different ways you can customize without having to be too techy the way the force happens. So going back to what I, I hope I'm not giving too much away here. I don't think I am. And I don't think any non-magician is going to be watching this. But when they are uh, looking at your phone, and this is one of the other convincers I didn't mention earlier, they can scroll around quite freely, whatever it is they're looking at. They can have a good look at it. But then when you want, the next scroll up is going to be the one that, that lands where you want it to land. And I like that. And you can set that off in a variety of different ways. There's a proximity center, sensor. It uses an Apple Watch app, which is no extra, which is really good. But you do get this only on the Pro. You wouldn't get this on the Amalgam uh, version. And there are different ways, again, of setting that force um, when they're looking at it, when you're holding the phone, etc. So that it's a, it's a re I think it's a really impressive thing. I think a look, it's intuitive. It looks good. Even when you open it up, it gives you a walkthrough. If you open it up for the first time, it gives you a walkthrough of the app and it, it gives you this little screen where it, it says, have a go at it yourself. So you get a feel for what it is even before you start, um, start using it. One of the other things that's important for me is that it doesn't get bogged down in hundreds of settings. And it does feel like that at the beginning, but actually when you go through the very, very clear instructions and within the app, there is the instructions and also uh, Mark um, shows a couple of videos, one of them from the London Magic Convention where he's talking about it. So after reading that, you've kind of got all you need. And actually the settings are very basic. There's a few of them. There's not, it doesn't get bogged down. Um, not that apps that do that are a problem. Sometimes we need that because they're so versatile. But this one is, it feels very straightforward. And when you do the remote thing, like I said, it almost kind of walks you through it. So by the time you've got through it, you're ready to go. Um, so on the plus side, it's great. It's straight there. You know, you don't need any other things. I love the fact that you've got your phone and you can do all these uh, miracles uh, on your phone on the not on the negative side, but on the sort of more challenging side for me, I suppose, is that you have to have an internet connection. So I, have, I did start trying to do it the other day and I realised that I didn't, had hardly any bars, so I couldn't do it. So you do need a, you need a fairly decent internet connection. It's not like an amazing one. Um, but, you know, it's not like Digital Force Bag where you, you can do it completely offline. For some people, the fact that it's on your phone is going to be an issue. For a lot of people, the fact it's an iPhone app is going to be an issue. And there are a couple of little things that I think, you know, when these apps first get released, there are updates and there are a couple of little glitches, which I think are being sorted out at the moment, which aren't a problem, but, you know, you expect this. And Mark, like all of these other app developers, is just working day and night constantly to improve um, 
and make this great. And it is already brilliant. I really, really like it, uh, as are all of Mark's apps. So I'll try and do a separate small video on Zeno if you want to know about that. Or if you've got any questions about that, I'll take it into the next Thursday session. So I think that made sense. I hope it did. I'm not very good at app reviews, but, uh, but any questions, let me know down below in the comments and uh, check out onlinemagic.co. And um, I think that's it. Like and subscribe. Cheers. Bye.